Let us introduce and unpack this question that we got from Hondo. Sent in via email just a few minutes before the webinar, Hondo asked, when we see a stock or ETF that is in a downfall, or we think we're going into a bear market, at what point should we buy put options to profit for the downturn? How far out in time or what expiration date should be selected? Should we look to buy puts that are out of the money, OTM, at the money, ATM, or in the money, ITM? Shorting using stock is a hassle and not worth the trouble, but buying puts is more profitable. Well, let's think about this for a moment. General initial thoughts, at what point should we buy puts? When we see technicals or trends change, not necessarily after a very large breakout or other things of that nature related to a known event with unknown consequences. How far out or which expiration date should we choose? Well, we wanna minimize our annual cost per day and give ourselves time for the stock or the underlying to move in our desired direction without overpaying too much. Should puts be bought out of the money, at the money, or in the money? This will depend on our expectations. And we got just the tool to illustrate which one we should probably select based on our expectations. Shorting the stocks is a hassle and puts, buying puts for a decline are more profitable. Is that always the case, however, based on implied volatility, Greeks, and other factors? Let's take a look at each of these segments using the tools and power options and determine what strike, what expiration dates, and when we should buy. Let's go to step one. When we see a stock or ETF that is in a downfall or we go into a bear market, at what point should we buy puts? Actually, VIX is a pretty good one to use. Let me just navigate over to the VIX here. Let's go to charts and let's go to big charts. This is not a standard security or an ETF. Yehondo was referring to maybe SPY seeing in a downfall or SH, the short SPY. We could take a look at that as well. But we look here and we see this decline just a month ago or so. VIX was up 21, 22, 23, around where it's been hanging out, okay, down in the 16, 14, 13 range, back up here. The average of this year has probably been around 15 or so, maybe 16, I might say 17. But recently we are up here at the peak and we see this in a downfall. Now, when was a good time to maybe buy puts on this particular ETF? Well, there's several times we might have been able to buy here and uh, we could have seen a profit at this point. If we didn't close out here, might have given a little bit of that profit back here. Great time to buy puts would have been over here at this time frame. So we take a good advantage of this dip, see reasonable expected profits on the position. Now, this is how I have my chart set up. And when you're on power options, you can link to big charts. This is very similar to what Ernie has. I'm looking at just basically a three month chart. Let me change my pen color. You can't see that against the dark background. I apologize. Let's go to something bright and buoyant. All right, so here we go. I have a three month chart. I'm using the 20 day moving average. That's this line here. And the reason I'm using the 20 day moving average is that I also prefer to use the Bollinger Bands, looking for things that might show a Bollinger Band breakout, where there's usually some hesitation, and then we see it continue to climb. Now this hasn't had a negative Bollinger Band breakout yet. I'm gonna talk about that in a moment. But I also have the MACD here, and the RSI down below. Let me scroll down a little bit further so you can see that as well as the dates. Okay, so there's no volume for this. That's a little bit tough on this ETF. Volume might come into play as well, Hondo, if you start to see a weakness and you start to see less trading and say SPY or QQQ. Typically what I look for is when a security crosses below the 20 day moving average and I start to see this negative MACD crossover where the MACD 1226, that blue line, cuts below the EMA 9. Doesn't matter if they're above or below the divergence, but when I see something dropping below the SMA 20 and I see a negative MACD, 
that's usually a clue to me that this is a stock that I don't want to buy or an ETF that I don't want to buy for a married put position or something along those lines might be something I'd be interested in doing, buying a put on. Doing a bear call credit spread on the VIX if I think the market's going to be neutral to bullish and volatility is going to come down. We actually have a default search and power options and bear call credit spreads that look specifically for bear calls on the VIX. Now, here's sort of a trick with this. Going back to that second time, at what point should we buy puts? Well, we never have perfect timing, but I want to see these type of triggers. I want to see stocks dropping below a specific simple moving average that I like to use. I like to see a negative MACD crossover at least by one or two days, and that's when I'm probably getting into the position. I could set up the power option search to look specifically for that negative MACD crossover at least by one or two days. Stocks below the SMA 20 within the last two days, three days, or four days, for example. And I can look for weak volume or other things like that. But in this ETF, it doesn't really count right? because there's no volume on it. Could you be profitable again if you bought puts here at this time and managed to close them here? Yes, but would you give back profit if it started to recover slightly? Yeah, but maybe not too much. Those are some of the basics you might want to look for. Is it etched in stone? No, and this is a bad example to use. I'm waiting for someone to point it out. This is a bad example to use because if anything comes out over the weekend uh, about any increase in tensions and um, conflict in the Middle East, in Ukraine, Russia, or anything of that nature, the VIX could easily spike back up to 16 or 17, and I've essentially given back everything on my puts. You typically won't see SPY jump and gap that much on positive news, but you might. We had some Powell comments today saying, hey, you know, let's throw some cold water on this idea of this rumor of six rate cuts over the next year, the next few quarters. We're not necessarily there yet, but the market didn't really react terribly to that. Said, okay, well, that's what he's thinking, but we'll see. But he didn't say no. He just said, let's let's wait and see how things pan out a little bit. So he had some comments in there. All right. But that break point, how do you find the best timing? How do you find the break point? This is something that has worked for me. As I mentioned before, on the bullish side, we're not seeing it here on the bearish side, but on the bullish side, Ernie tends to look for something called the Bollinger Band breakout. And of course, again, you can see this is the upper Bollinger Band, and this is our lower Bollinger Band here. And a Bollinger Band breakout is essentially when a security closes above the upper Bollinger Band <clears throat> one day and then closes above it the next day. It's usually a buy signal. So you have a run up here, and you usually see some hesitation. I don't want to call it the cup and handle, but you can see it's pretty close. And then some movement up, and then this. But this is not something you're planning for a two to three day profitable trade. You're not day trading options, and we personally don't day trade options. That's going to relate to your expiration question. Because if the stock has the move you want three or four days, you could profit potentially on every put at any expiration. Yeah, the cheaper ones are going to show more of a percentage profit. But at the same time, Hondo, if you don't see the movement you're expecting in the first four or five days, buying a weekly because it was cheap, whether it's in the money, at the money, or out of the money, could result in double-digit losses, maybe as much as 60 or 70%. Then you've got to buy another one the next week out, two weeks out. What are you doing at that time? What I mentioned before, you're increasing your annualized cost basis, where at that point it would have been cheaper just to buy the one month out or two month output rather than trying to buy week by week by week to try to time it perfectly if you're not seeing the movement that you expected. Now, again, am I saying at this point, because the MACD has been negative for so long and the stock, the ETF, the VIX here has been below the SMA 20 for an extended period, is this a good time to buy a put on SPY? Hard to see, I know. But I don't think so, because down here, we're actually starting to see a little bit of a back crossover on the MACD. I'm not sure if it's going to be pronounced. I'm not sure if it's going to last. But we're seeing a little hesitation here in the MACD where the buying strength started to move back up, or the positive strength. I can't say buying strength, but the positive strength started to move back up. Assume it's just an, a, a normal stock, not, not the VIX, but assuming it's a normal stock. I'm starting to see some hesitation, even though there's a pullback today. Now, I'm just looking at the three-month chart, 
And of course, if I go back historically, let's go back year to date. You can see here, we're essentially at the lowest point we've been in the VIX. Questionable. Dangerous. Maybe. To assume that it's going to continue to go down another 30, 40, 50% from its highs up at 30 back at the beginning of the year in February and in March as well. All that being said, let's head back over to Power Options. Let's go to the home page. I am seeing things right now in the market sentiment. We're holding it a sell warning because of the strength that we've been at. This is a tool that shows us the 13 broad based indicators uh, that Ernie tested over time. You know, looking through 50 to 40 different indicators and setting fences based on historical measurements of when these ratios show a bearish trend, when a put call volume ratio reaches a certain fence, last value of 0 0.60 down here, that's where we are right now. So we're here at 0 0.60, that's where the red line is. And yeah, it does go below that, but very infrequently does it continue down below say 0.5. It usually snaps back up. And in order for it to snap back up, what has to happen? Well, the market has to start to turn, but right now it is a bearish indicator, but we might see some different changes very soon. We've been going up, we've been going up. How would the put call ratio affect that? Well, naturally the put call volume ratio, excuse me, Hondo, it starts to go back up. It goes up to only 0 0.7, it goes up to 0 0.8, it goes up to 0 0.9. Well, that means it's getting closer to one. Right now there's an imbalance. The market's been strong. More people are buying calls and puts. Usually it's an inflection point of when it starts to reverse. People start buying more puts than calls. Hence your question as well. The point of your question, perhaps. Okay. So I'm seeing some sell warnings. And what I did in the past couple days is I sold calls against my married put positions. Owning stock puts out several months for protection, insurance on the larger stock holdings. I think the market's hitting a top. I think there's going to be hesitation and delay. I sold calls on Wednesday and Thursday. And I can buy a lot of the back right now for 60, 70% profit because the market did pull back slightly, at least on my stocks. We talked about at what point we should buy puts, in my opinion. I can use the long put search, two different ways to look at it. This is the Bollinger Band default search, as I mentioned. We talked about looking at that chart and looking for Bollinger Band breakouts. Essentially, what this search that Ernie created is looking for is puts that are near the bottom of that lower Bollinger Band. Three months out to expiration for the option. It's in the bottom of its yearly play range in a downtrend. Pretty much exactly what I said related to those, but looking for trying to something that might have had a Bollinger Band breakout. PFE is one that came up. Let's go ahead and take a look at the stock chart there for PFE. Does it match what I said I would be looking for? Well, it just had that big drop today. Had a positive MACD crossover, but here we are dropping below the 20 day moving average, and the MACD looks like it's inflecting downwards at this point. Now, 12 months though, year to date, let's say, let's go ahead and do that. Stock's down here at this $28 level. It's the lowest it's been the entire year. I'm not saying that means it's going to necessarily snap back. This is related to earnings, why it's showing near that Bollinger Band bottom, and it's starting to show a negative MACD as well. Might be interesting what Pfizer does going in on Monday, uh, how it reacts to whatever market conditions and news that comes out. Let's make some subtle changes. I'm going to go into the technicals. And we're looking for stocks, as I mentioned, below the SMA 20, looking for less than 5% stocks through that bottom Bollinger Band um, as well. But we didn't have any MACD crossover. So I'm going to look for the days the stock crossed below the 20 day moving average by at least two days. That's probably going to take out Pfizer. And I also want the MACD cross signal to have crossed within the last three days or so. Now that's highly subjective. And I'm not going to be surprised here if we still see no results that match this criteria. It's very, very specialized. All right. But we've got four. Wybo, Franco Nevada, Amerisafe Patterson Company. Let's take a look at the Wybo. And if I'm mispronouncing that, hey, I'm mispronouncing it. Could be Weibo, could be Wybo. There's that Bollinger Band breakout, massive negative term. This could be something related to earnings. We could look that up in the news real quick. You see the high volume 
I'm assuming this was bad news or earnings that came out on this position. But you're seeing the trends that you want even though it's sudden. Franco Nevada, 313. So they would have had, that's odd, 229. Yeah, so this is recent. It would have been 1129, right? And 222. Let's look at Amerisafe, see how it's continued down. Now, that's another Bollinger Band. Uh, that's another earnings breakout. Okay. Let's clear this up real quick. I'm going to look for the same settings in this case, <clears throat> but I'm going to change that technical slightly. I want to see that are under by at least two days and have been under MACD is crossover by at least six or seven days instead of that sudden break. Let's look for something that's more in a consistent downtrend. Starbucks and Occidental, that's interesting. Let's take a look at Starbucks. Okay, there we go. That's more of the inflection point I was talking about. You see it right there about six, seven days ago. True, if you caught this point, you'd probably be profitable on any put. But right here with the stock at 102, that's when it crossed below the 20-day moving average and right about when we saw that negative MACD crossover. We're starting to see the trends scaling downwards. The stock had been trading in this range. This is an earnings pop, but now it's getting weaker and weaker, it seems. And the market during this time, remember, it was going up pretty much until about the last couple of days. And then we had another movement upwards. Had some hesitation there. All right, so let's use this as our next example. We're going to use Starbucks. The easiest way to show this for me is the search tool, but I can show it very, I'm going to show it very quickly on the option chain, Hondo. Then we're going to jump back to the search tool to, to showcase something else. And then we're going to show our last portion. All right. So what have we talked about here? The trends, what to look for, how to set up the search to find more pronounced downtrends using that MACD crossed by at least five or six days, MACD under the cross signal by at least five or six days been under the 20-day moving average by at least two days, enhancing a little bit of the Bollinger Band default screen. And not the initial values, but the Bollinger Bands. You have the same values in long calls. Of course, we'd be reversed. We'd be looking for a positive MACD crossover at least four or five days, crossed above the SMA 20 within the last two or three days as well. 